Hi there guys, we're going to look at doing some work on slope fields today. It's 11.5, slope fields uh, and differential equations, or sometimes they're called direction fields. All right, so you've already done some work on differential equations, say for example, this one here, example 24. You can see um, they've got dA dt is equal to Ka, so there's your equation of the derivative or your differential equation and you want to then go back and work out what the equation for a is for example in this answer or often you'll work out your equation for y so you'll do that by splitting the variables um, here we've actually only got the a but we need to take the a to join the da on this side and the dt to join the d's on this side but actually we have a constant there and when we do that we need to integrate as well Okay, so you've done that before. That's one which solves and they give you some specific information when A is nine, T is equal to two. They give you that specific information there, um, which enables you to solve the equation for from the differential equation to, to give you the original equation for A, for example. Okay, um, now with Sometimes it's really important to notice to note that you cannot solve differential equations. So a bit like with integration, you can't always solve, you can't always integrate algebraically every function, but you can often find approximations in your calculator deals with that. So in a similar sort of way, um, we are only able to deal with a limited amount of differential equations, just as we're only able to deal with a limited amount of situations with um, with integration. Okay, um, so what what the aim is when we get our derivative, our aim is to find an equation for y. Now we're building up here to essentially get to the point where we can use Euler's method for numerically solving differential equations. Okay, and so that's going to be a non-exact method for when it's not possible to use a technique of splitting the variables and integrating. Okay, so in order to get to that point, we need a little work on slope fields. Now, let me just, before I talk about the technical side of this, let me just um, show you kind of what we're heading towards here. So what we're trying to make are these kind of arrays here. So let's look at this one. These arrays, where you get the gradients at particular x, y coordinate points. And these will give you families of curves. Here is one particular curve which goes through the point minus one zero. We'll talk about how to get those curves in a bit. But this is an approximation to this curve. Um, maybe that's the exact curve that they've actually drawn, but you'll be required to draw sketches, approximate sketches for these curves as well. You can see these things as a sort of flow around the system. Look, example on the left hand side you're kind of going upwards and uh, you can see sort of a flow from left to right following the curve which is given there but there is a family of curves hidden there for particular solutions that is when we're given a particular x y coordinate point um, and to enable us to enable us to solve it okay so um, let's look at the technical side of this then first and this is not too difficult in fact these questions are um, they are fairly tedious to um, to do, and you'll need to produce sketches of these slope fields. So let's look at this one. It says dy dx equals y minus 3x divided by 2. So if I put any one of these coordinate points in over here, I can find out um, the gradient of the curve that we have uh, at that particular point. Um, so, for example, if I put in 1, 1, put in 1 and 1 here, I get out the answer of minus 1. And there we go, we've drawn a gradient of minus 1 there. You can see that it doesn't extend forever. In fact, it's only valid at the particular point, but obviously that particular point is infinitely small. So you're just going to do a small little line for this one um, that goes roughly from about 0 0.5 to 1.5 just to show gradient at that particular point. You can see we've done this as well for x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. That's this point here. If you substitute those two things in, you'll get minus a half. 
Now, um, you obviously should know how to make gradients, but essentially, let's just recap briefly, the minus one gradient means one across and one down. The minus a half gradient means one across and a half down. Gradients always mean for every one you go across, how much up or down are you going? That's the point of this number here. Okay, um, you know, if you're going to do something like, let's say if you have to draw the gradient of four, then obviously you're not going to draw a massive line there for that one. You're just going to draw a line which is roughly as steep as one across and four up. You might have to use, you know, 0 0.5 across and two up instead. But even that's too long. So, so yeah, so you just have to get it roughly right when you're making your sketches. OK, so if you do that for the entire grid, there we go. Uh, you, maybe you'll be asked to do that for the entire grid in an extended question, or maybe you'll be asked to complete a little bit of it. Um, so there we go. That would be your slope field in this case. Now, as I said before, there's a family of curves hidden in there. And normally, remember, let's just go back to a, another question. So let's remember, like in this question here, we were given some information here to find the particular solution, not the general solution. So the particular solution we found because we had a coordinate point, 9 and 2. We have this information here, or 2, 9, whichever way around it is. OK, so if, let's just go ahead to down here. So if we're given a particular coordinate point, for example, minus 1, 0, well, we know that the gradient of the curve is whatever it is there, 1 or something or other, or 2.9. 